Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. When I was talking to Paul Fricker, he gave us some insights into all of the various projects that he's working on. Campaigns, scenarios, all kinds of secret things, which I like to call the Frickiverse. Here's the interview. I hope you enjoy it. But before you watch, remember to subscribe to the Chaosium YouTube channel. It helps us out and it lets us make more content like this. Thanks. I've um, recently published, well, I say recently, last year, uh, published Full Fathom 5. I've, I've branched out into publishing one or two of my own scenarios on the Miskatonic uh, repository on Drive Through RPG. That was a ton of work <laughs> so usually i've i've worked with uh, like mike mason and he sort of said can you write a scenario about you know this or, or a scenario for this book or can you revise this scenario but actually taking one from inception through all of the steps and being involved in the whole process through you know working with artists and working with somebody on layout uh, and working with an editor and then taking it through and actually uploading the files myself and and you know dealing with all of that stuff oh man there's so you know i've got a, a new appre appreciation for what mike uh, does because he's you know on, on board with all of that through all of the chaosium books or, or all of the call of cthulhu books i've also got a few more now that i've i feel like i've learned a lot during that process so i've got a few other scenarios that i'm working on to to take through that same uh, path to the miskatonic repository most of these are ones that i've actually either published before actually yeah they're all ones that i've published before but they're not there for seventh edition at the moment and they're not all that necessarily that easy to get hold of so there's some um, dockside dogs which is my uh, take on uh, Reservoir Dogs, the film, uh, which has been on the been on drive through for the uh, for previous editions, and it's still up there, um, and it, it you know it sells a little bit, um, but I'm hoping to like revise that and do a nice edition because um, oh, man, I looked it up and it's like almost thirty years since that film came out. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> and it's almost ten years since my scenario came out. Um, but so I'm excited to get that out and give that a new lease of life. Um, My Little Sister is a, a kind of a sci-fi scenario that I did. Uh, that was published uh, in a Cthulhu Britannica book some years ago. But again, that's that's now long out of print and uh, isn't available anymore. So I'm thinking, yeah, that'd be a nice one to revise and uh, get on the repository. And also Gatsby and the Great Race, which was released under the Miskatonic University, uh, what was it called? The Moolah Programme. It was it was like um, limited runs that the that Chaosium used to do anyway. So uh, I mean the old the old edition version of that is available, but I'm hoping to like again polish it up and bring it out for seventh edition. And because uh, looking back on some of these old scenarios, I can see that uh, the ideas are in there and the, and the scenario. You know, I'm I'm still happy with the scenarios, but there's a lot of stuff that can be a just like bought up seventh edition so just the mechanics bought up seventh edition but some of the, the the way it's presented feels a bit dated now um you know certain aspects of it approaches to gaming and societal things have, have changed so they can be improved can you tell us a little bit about full fathom five what people can expect from that yeah sure so that's a that's a scenario set aboard a whaling ship in 1847 uh i was very influenced by moby dick i've always kind of wanted to write a scenario using that setting something about it just appeals to me and it's kind of perfect for call of cthulhu because call of cthulhu one-offs particularly thrive on an isolated um location and you can't really get more isolated than being stuck aboard a ship with like a crew of about 20 23 people and you, you know there is nowhere else to go well there is there's the deep blue ocean but you don't want to go there <laughs> um and um it's it's very much a kind of a, a one shot game. The mechanics of it are somewhat unusual. Um, it, it kind of plays around a little bit with the the rules and the um, and how it works. Somebody, a, a group on um, Twitter, played it yesterday, and I was very pleased that one of the players said. Now, just let me see if I can capture what he said. He said there was a sense of impending or inevitable doom but I didn't feel there was any loss of agency as a player. And I thought, well, that's just what I was aiming for because it is like total impending doom for, it's not that everybody is definitely going to die, but there is a, there is, you know, going to be a body count definitely. And a player character 
headcount, definitely. Hopefully, you know, my aim is that from a player perspective, you don't feel, you, you do feel like you've got agency. You do feel like there's meaningful things you can do. And in the scenario, there are meaningful things you can do that will affect, you know, the, the outcome at the end. So yeah, yeah, that's really, really exciting. I, I'll have to uh, pick it up and play it through with my group myself. Beyond your work on Call of Cthulhu, you also are a podcast host, which I'm sure a lot of our viewers already are familiar with and are excited to see you uh, being interviewed for just that reason. Do you want to talk about your podcast a bit? Yeah, sure. So I uh, am one of the hosts of the Good Friends of Jackson Elias podcast, along with Scott Dorwood and Matthew Sanderson. Um, We've all published for Call of Cthulhu. You know, this was, oh, what was it, about seven or eight years ago now that we started doing the podcast. So it feels like a long time. <laughs> um, it comes out uh, every two weeks. We come out with a, a new episode. We've managed to come up with a format that allows us to, to keep, hopefully keep it interesting and fresh. So we look at not just the gaming. Uh, we're very much about Call of Cthulhu. Um, but we also look at individual horror films, or books or short stories and do a synopsis of the story. And then we try and always come back to gaming. So we always try and reflect on, you know, how could we use, I don't know, Hellraiser in our gaming or, you know, ideas that might spin off from a story. We, we talked about The Willows recently by Elton on Blackwood. And we tied that into cosmic horror. We did an episode on cosmic horror. And as a host, I mean, it's... <clears throat> One of the things that I enjoy is, you know, we, we could sit around and shoot the breeze and talk about cosmic horror or something like that, me and you. But I think because when you're talking about on a podcast, you've really got to sort of focus in and try and dig down and, and, and say something meaningful and really try and get to grips with the, the, the project, the topic. Um, sometimes out of those conversations, yeah, thing I have realizations, you know, just through the through the discussion. So um, I find it very interesting because it, it it forces you to really focus. I guess that's the thing is what I'm struggling to say here. It forces you to really really focus on that one thing for an hour and really try and get to grips with it personally. 